the live event and there we go we are live and working again so i'm sorry uh for those of you who uh <laughs> joined a little early but i'm james wright welcome to my shop i'm having a little bit of fun here and working with the new camera so i hope this image is a little bit better i'm going to be answering your questions uh, concerns thoughts live here so if you have any questions go ahead and post them in the chat uh, if you can put like a question at the beginning or something of that nature so that i know that there is a question um, i'll try and get to that if you are watching this um, and you are not live, you're watching it in the past, I will have all of the questions in the uh, the description down below so you can actually go through and read through those questions and skip straight, straight to those in the, the session. So we should be having a little bit of fun here. Um, other notes that I want to talk about, I'm also, I just opened up a uh, Facebook group. It's a, a closed group, uh, so you have to ask permission to get in, but it is uh, Wood by Right Hive Mind. And so this is kind of a place where I can ask questions of the audience and say, you know, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think about that? Uh, what are your suggestions on this particular topic? And kind of get a, a place to bounce those ideas off. So if that's something you want to find out more, I'll try and leave a link to that in the description. Otherwise, you can search on Facebook for uh, Wood by Right Hive Mind. And we are going to have, have a, a good bit, bit of fun, fun today. today. I love playing with my audio mixer. It's so much fun. Got some new technology in here. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, now, I'm also trying to get some uh, camera set up so that I can do this over at the bench eventually. Uh, but the stuff I need to do that I haven't quite gotten set up. So today we're going to be playing with this. So if you have any questions, leave those in the chat and I will get to them. Let's see who's in here. Hey, a clean fill wanted. Good to have you. Um, if you guys haven't seen Cleanfill Wanted, you got to go check out his channel. Um, he does hand tool woodworking and does some really, really cool things. He just finished this uh, planter series where he's making planters that were uh, like the ones used in Hobbiton in the movie. Uh, really cool because he's currently over in uh, New Zealand, I believe. Yeah, I think he's in New Zealand at the moment. Uh, let's see who else is in here. Dylan's Woodworks. Good to have you here again. Yeah, we're uh, having fun. And no, this is not a test. This is the actual thing. Uh, what kind of audio mixer do you have? I have a, uh, this is a Yamaha MG 10 XU. Uh, it's a what 10 input, uh, mixer. And uh, that way I can mix in the audio from this mic as well as I can mix in my lapel mic. And then I have a couple other zone mics over there and I can mix them out. You may be hearing my son. He seems to be playing upstairs. <laughs> um, Question, how much room for expansion and contraction should you leave as a general rule of thumb? Um, John, this is from John Thomas. Uh, let me copy this. On. It, you have to bear with me when I copy and paste these. I'm actually going to be um, copying them and putting them over here so that I can put them in the description later. So uh, John Thomas asks, how much room should I leave for expansion and contraction? Um, well, that depends a lot on the wood and the direction it's going. And just a second. I have to tell my son to uh, get off the floor above me because he's playing marbles on the wooden floor above me. <laughs> uh, expansion and contraction. Um, it, it depends on the type of wood. Uh, the, the softer the wood, usually the more expansion and contraction you're going to have. Um, harder, stiffer woods tend to have a little less construction. Um, the more pores that are in the wood, the more water they can absorb, the more they expand. Depends on your weather in your area. If you have a lot of wild swings from very dry times to very wet times, you'll have a lot of expansion and contraction. Um, but kind of as a rule of thumb with most hardwoods, um, I, I generally leave about an eighth inch um, per 18 inches or so. Um, and that, that, that tends to be about right. Uh, if I was in a wild swinging area, I might have more than that. Um, in an air conditioned house all the time, I'm going to have a lot less than that. Uh, but that's yeah, about average. Um, if you have like a big farm table that's outside, uh, like 40 inches across, you might see an eighth inch on either side. So a quarter inch total, uh, movement throughout the year, but, uh, that, that can vary wildly. Hope that answers your question. If not, um, go ahead and put it down below. If any of you have questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. And uh, if you can just put like question at the beginning or cue or something of that nature so I can pick it out because I'm trying to uh, keep up with these and read down through them. But we'll see if I actually get to keep up. I rarely do. <laughs> uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. 
Yeah, glad you haven't glued your fingers together from Sean Gibson. Yes, I have not glued my fingers together. My my shop is um, full of glue right now, and I'm past the halfway point in actually gluing everything together. And I'm looking forward to doing that uh, that testing. Um, Wildman uh, Wildman Tech, another YouTube channel, is building the actual frame for the testing rig. He just finished it, and we'll be shipping that out here soon. So when that comes and the gluing's done, I'll be getting a video together. It'll be fun. Um, we we'll have to be careful of bumping the camera. Thanks for the new hive mind. Yeah, this is uh, Travis Reese. Um, yeah, I, I like the the hive mind thing. It's a it's a good way for me to kind of get ideas of. Hey, do you guys really want me to make a video about this? Um, you know, do you have any ideas for a video that I can do today? And I'm hoping to use that more and being able to ask those questions fairly quickly. Um. Uh, do, 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 do. Hey, Make Brooklyn is in the house. So definitely another channel you got to go check out, Make Brooklyn. He's got some sweet stuff over there. I always like to watch his stuff when it pops up. Um, um, yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, um, Clean Phil Wanted, if you're still here, uh, post a link to your uh, New Zealand planter build. Uh, Ray Roberts wants to see that. And... Uh, um, so yeah, go ahead and throw that in the chat. Well, actually, I don't think you can put it in the chat. Oh, snake, no one can put it in the chat. I don't have that setting on. Um, so yeah, Ray, if you want to see that, um, if you click on clean fill wanted or go type in clean fill wanted, uh, planter, you'll see that video in the search term. Um, sorry, I don't have the, the links enabled on here. It's one of the things that, uh, the chats do is some people like to spam links. And so they, they, they stop that. Um, Yes, um, Sullivan uh, Gregory um, says, unless the wood is green, then it's going to move a lot. Yes, and if your wood is green, uh, it's going to shrink quite a bit over time um, as it gets rid of all the excess moisture it has. Uh, so that's why we, we kiln dry or air dry the wood before using it. Uh, makes it a little bit more stable. Uh, let's see. What's next on the chopping block? I'm looking forward to being involved in the group. Uh, well, number one, right now I'm focusing on this wood glue test. Once I get this wood glue test, then the next big project is the dining room table. And I'm probably going to spend an entire month detailing the build of the dining room table. Um, but while I'm working on the glue test, I, I don't have a whole lot of time to work on other projects. So I'm doing a couple other smaller videos, um, things like how to make some of the glues I'm testing. Um, I, the video coming out tomorrow is all about strops. Um, I've had a lot of people asking questions about you know, what type of leather should I use? What type of uh, polishing compound do I use the rough side? Do I use the smooth side? And I tried to answer a lot of those in that. So that video should be out tomorrow. Um, I'm also going to be making uh, next week. I'm making a hand plane. A, uh, I'm going to make a low angle bevel down plane. Um, which is going to confuse a lot of people because usually your low angle is bevel up. Um, but I want to have a chip breaker on a low angle plane. So I'm going to be moving it from 45 degrees down to 30 degrees with a 25 degree bevel angle and then putting a chip breaker on it. So it's an extremely low angle cutting plane uh, and allows you to do some more figured woods with it. So that, that should be uh, kind of fun. I'll be making that out of hard maple. Uh, let's see. Any good way to identify braces in online listings that will work with normal bits rather than only the tapered um, traditional bits. I have a modern one in addition to my antiques, but it's total crap. Uh, this is from Make Brooklyn. That's a good question. Um, I don't know of any particular one other than most of the newer braces. In other words, um, braces that were made like in the, the 50s and newer, um, those ones will tend to have a, a, a jaw that will work for both. Uh, the older ones um, just won't do it, um, especially if any you see like they have a set screw on the side that clamps into it. Um, they, they tend to have the, the two vice jaws that won't grab a hex as well. Um, but yeah, most of the newer ones, the the ones that have a ratcheting head, most of those will work well with it. Um, but other than that, I don't know of a specific way to actually look at it and say, yeah, this will work. Um, and for those of you who are wondering, um, the the traditional head for a brace and bit is actually a tapered square shaft. And it was the original method that a brace would connect to it. And it's kind of an ingenious method that works fairly well. Um, but when hex bits came out, those tapered shafts went uh, the way of the dodo. Um, and so a lot of the 
the braces in the transition period work very well for both. Um, some of the older ones will work with a hex head, but they tend to be a little bit sloppy in there and they're not quite as fun. Um, if any of you know of a good way of identifying that right off the bat um, of one that works with both, I would love to hear that. Uh, but I don't really know other than most of the newer ones do and the older ones don't. <laughs> um, ah, Dylan, great. Uh, Dylan's Woodwork got puts the the link up there. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to be making a few other people in the uh, um, in the, the the common group moderators to try and uh, answer some of the questions. So if you're a moderator, you can actually uh, post in links. So thank you for that, Dylan. Awesome job, man. Um, I did a glue test once, but got stuck. <laughs> yes, um, I'm stuck. I'm sorry for the camera wobbling. If I touch my desk, it wobbles. So I have to try and stay away from that. Uh, let's see. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'd love to see that. Uh, hey, James, question. This is from Raphael's Woodshop. Um, do you have any thoughts about Veritas shooting plane uh, versus the Lee Nielsen one? Uh, do you have any advice about which one I should think, which, which one I should pick? <laughs> uh, that's like uh, picking the difference between absolute perfection on both ends. Um, they're, they're both going to work well for you. I, I like the Lee Nielsen setup. Um, Lee Nielsen's mindset is more of uh, in improving on systems and making things better. And um, they often come up with styles that aren't based on traditional um, setups and designs. And so they tend to have a lot of newfangled ideas and functionalities. And I kind of like that. Um, whereas Veritas tends to be a little bit more of the traditional style. They try to make things look and feel more traditional. And uh, so I guess it depends on which way you prefer it to be. Uh, do you do you find yourself a traditional woodworker and you like that that feel of the traditional way things are done? Then you might like the the uh, the Lee Nielsen style. Whereas if you want something to be functional and newfangled and you like new technology, then uh, the Lee, then the Lee Valley Veritas may be the way to go for you. Um, personally, if I had to pick one, I would go with the Veritas, but that's because I, I like that uh, that mindset. That's my, my go-to. Um, are there any new, new collabs coming up? Uh, yes. Um, I will be doing one with, uh, Rex here soon, um, on the, the, actually the, the, the low angle plane I just uh, mentioned. And so that should be coming up. I'm working with a couple other channels right now and seeing about possible, um, collaborations. If you have any ideas, I would love to hear them. Um, I love it when people say, Hey, you should do a col collaboration with so-and-so about this. Um, I, I like to hear those ideas, uh, because, you know, I, I, I look at a channel and say, I'd like to do a collaboration about them, but, but with what what would work well with the two of us? So if you have any ideas for that, I'd love to hear those. Um, I have a few wooden planes. What is the best way to flatten the base? Sandpaper or planing? Please. This is from uh, Charlie Coldwell. Carly Carroll. Sorry, name butcherer. <laughs> Even simple first names. I have problems with apparently. Well, I, apparently I do. Um, I use a plane. Um, I use a very, very fine set, um, like a, a plane that is longer than the sole of the plane of the, the, the wooden body I am flattening. Um, just faster and easier. Uh, there's no reason to reinvent it as long as your shaving is really nice and smooth and you know the sole of the plane you're using is flat. Um, you'll get a really nice finish off it. And it's a lot faster than sandpaper. At least that's my per personal preference. Um, anytime I can use a plane rather than sandpaper, I, I do. I, I just, I don't like sandpaper if all possible. Did you jump right into hand tools or did you start with power tools? This is from Russell uh, Kieselblock. Blash. Sorry, another name butchered. Another one bites the dust. Um, I was raised with power tools. Um, I, I was raised in a shop and uh, that had all the power tools, planer, joiners, sanders, uh, routers, table saws, the whole nine yards. And I never touched a hand plane um, myself until a few years ago when I got into hand tools. And uh, I sold all my tools, became a stay-at-home dad, and I had a shop that was eight foot by eight foot or eight foot by 10 foot. And uh, I needed to have the kids close to me and hand tools just made sense. They were quiet, um, less dust, uh, less noisy, a little safer for the kids. And it was just a, it was one of those options where, ah, oh, I can do this. And I got to take all my knowledge from 
woodworking with power tools and transition it over into hand tools. And it was kind of relearning all the fun of woodworking again and a lot of fun there. So yes, uh, power tools are my background, but hand tools are now my passion. Robert uh, Tholen asks, uh, can you sharpen a regular drill bit that you can get at hardware stores? I'm guessing you're talking about like a, a spiral bit, one of the, the normal bits. Um, you can. Um, actually, if you are really careful, you can use a diamond plate for that and uh, and sharpen that. The problem with them is most of them are a, a high-speed steel or uh, um, a carbide even. And those... Um, you, you can't sharpen those with a file and they, uh, they just don't, uh, uh, they're, they're, they're harder than the file or close to the, the hardness of the file. Um, so you can't sharpen them like you would sharpen an auger bit, but if you have something like a, you know, a stone or a, a, a diamond plate, you can do that. It just takes a lot of work and being very careful with it. Um, yeah, I don't, <laughs> at that point they're they're kind of made to be disposable um but if you do get like a drill doctor or something like that that's an easy way to sharpen them but that's a power tool i guess uh, i'm currently building a hickory frame saw uh could you recommend a decent blade uh, for the rough, for rough work, um, by frame saw, I'm guessing you're talking about like a, a large Rubo saw, like a, a three or four foot long frame. Um, in which case, um, I, the one I was, I really like are from uh, Blackburn tools, uh, out in Pennsylvania. He does, um, some amazing work. My, uh, Rubo saw is, uh, one of his, um, I've also worked with, um, 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 at axe tool saws up in Wisconsin. Um, they uh, they both are great, uh, but I like the um, I like the the sharpening the, the the shape a little bit better on the uh, the ones from Blackburn. He also has a, a a good selection of sizes you can pick from. So if you have one particular uh, thoughts on accepting imperfections in wood, uh, this is a question from USA Georgia PA, Georgia Pennsylvania in the United States. That's an interesting name. <laughs> um, accepting imperfections well that depends on you know do you like figured wood um i love knots and swirling grain and messy looking wood uh, it's one of the reasons why i love white oak it usually is a very wild grain with a lot of imperfections um, if there are voids then epoxy works well and if that's the look you're going for then great um I, I don't know. Um, you'd have to be a little more specific in what you mean by accepting imperfections then, um, unless you're talking about, you know, twisted warped boards or um, if you have any particular specific, let me know. Uh, but yeah, I guess it all depends on what you, what style you're looking for. And, you know, a lot of people out there just really want that really nice, straight, clean grain look, um, in which case then, you know, imperfections are what you cut out, but everyone's a little bit different. Uh Santos Tejeda. That's a name I butchered. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I had a question. If some of my hand tools, like my marking gauge and wood planes, have gotten wet in the rain, any tips on cleaning and protecting them, uh, wood and metal tools? Uh, well, number one, dry them off. Um, number two, if there's any rust, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, sand will, uh, sandpaper will clean it off if it's not too deep. Um, if it is deeper than um, a vinegar bath or something, uh, there's, there's several different companies that make uh, uh, chemical baths for it. Um, but uh, most of the time, just a little bit of sandpaper will clean off the surface rust. And then I use a paste wax to protect mine. Um, once every six months or so, I just go through my shop and wipe down all of the open steel parts with a, with a coat of paste wax, and it keeps them fairly clean. Um, I'm, in a, I'm in a fairly well air-conditioned shop, um, so um, it's, a, it's a bit easier for me. Um, if I was in a garage, I would probably add paste wax to them more often. Um, but yeah, uh, that's that's my fixed is paste wax. Adding a question over here. Um, uh, Burley Woodworks. If you want to do a collaboration, send me a link. Um, let me know your idea. I'd love to um, to hear it. Yeah, uh, pitch me something, and we'll we'll see if we can make one. Uh, when flattening a smoothing harder more figured uh, when flattening smoothing 
when flattening and smoothing harder, more figured woods like knotty, burly hickory. Uh, what plain combination would you suggest? I have a sawmill and I get lots of crazy stressed out grains and hardwoods. This is from Dylan Woodworks. That's a great question. Um, I like using a high angle plane with a really close mouth and a really tight chip breaker. Um, I have an older video on actually how do you figure, um, how do you smooth figured wood uh, if you want to see that. But uh, that that's my preferred way. I like using a plane. If you set one up really high tolerance with the chip breaker really close to the tip, the mouth really close, um, and a very, very sharp and a higher angle, um, you can plane incredibly figured wood and get a really nice smooth glossy surface on it um, if that setup is too difficult for you a card scraper works really well uh, something like a stanley 80 uh, cabinet scraper um, i really like using that and if push comes to shove sandpaper uh, there's nothing wrong with it it works fairly well uh, just uh, uh, it's sandpaper right? It's not as fun, <laughs> but uh, that, that's my, I think my, my list is number one, I would use the, uh, the, the high angle smoothing plane. Number two, I would use a cabinet scraper or a card scraper and then number three sandpaper. So, yeah. Um, yes. Uh, Burley Woodworks asks, um, I, uh, I ran into a quite, I ran into this quite a bit. So when finishing purple heart, uh, do you have any suggestions with finishing and keeping the purple color? Because most of the time it just turns brown. Yes, it turns brown. Um, that's uh, normal oxidation. If you, uh, if you put on a sealing finish, it'll last a little bit longer, but eventually it'll turn brown, especially if it has any UV, um, and around it, it'll turn brown. That's just the the nature of it. I, I don't know of a way around that. Um, if anyone has a, a good idea, um, I haven't run into one. Um, Purple Heart, uh, Paduk, um, a lot of the the, car, the the colorful woods just eventually will turn brown. It's wood, and wood's natural color is brown. Um. Will I be doing a hand tool making contest? Um, I had fun with last year. Yes, uh, in the last two years, I've done uh, the hand tool build off. I don't know if I'll do it again this year. Um, it is a lot of work and it ends up being uh, fairly expensive on my end, um, hosting the whole thing. Um, I would like to, but I haven't quite decided if I want to do it yet. Um, my mother really wants me to do it because she has a hand tool that she wants to make, <laughs> um, which probably means I'll, I'll probably end up doing it. Um, but yeah, the uh, the hand tool build off 2018 will probably happen sometime in June. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. Let's see 23. And that's always a, a fun thing because it's a, it's a great way uh, for a lot of people to create tutorials on how to make tools. And then all those tools that are made in the tutorials then get given away to other people. And it's a kind of a, a cool meta way to, to build more tools and get more tools in the community. Um, oops, we had that in there. Sorry, I'm posting all these in so that people can see them in the chat after it's in the description afterwards. Stands your saw voice. Um, make both for my shop. Just uh, trying to find the questions. If you do leave a question, if you can put questions up front, so I'm not just reading through all these trying to find the questions. Uh, please show us how to make a saw from scratch. I know you're not a blacksmith, but it would be awesome. This is from um, Awesome Lenidas the Fourth. Um, yes, that is actually on my list. I want to make a back saw. Um, I want to make a, a hand saw. Um, some of the, the best tutorials on that I've seen are from Bearcat uh, Woodworking. Uh, if you type in Bearcat Woodworking um, handsaw, um, you'll come across that. He actually makes them from uh, plates of spring steel. They're really not that hard to make and uh, a fairly simple, fun thing to make. And so that's, that is on my list, uh, but probably not until early fall. Uh, because I've got a lot of other things planned up. But yes, I do want to make those eventually. 
Uh, would selling furniture to a consignment shop be a good idea? Uh, depends on your furniture, your consignment shop, uh, what you want to do, how long. Um, but yeah, anytime you can sell furniture for a profit, I say that's a good idea. Um, I don't sell my things because uh, the amount of time I put into them being completely hand tools uh, would make mean that I'm making like four or five dollars an hour, and that's just not worth it to me. So I only make things that I want or things that I want to give to people. Uh, but that's my personal take. Um, how is the pull lathe working out? Great. Um, it's right over there, just off the camera. Um, actually, I'm hoping to do a video with my mother here to come over soon and let her try it out. Um, I don't have any projects right now off the top of my head that I'm going to be building on it, but uh, would like to uh, do some more with it. Uh, what grease do you use for your post drill? Um, I have no idea. <laughs> it's whatever grease I have. Um, I, 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 yeah, most of the time it's just oil um, and I'll reapply oil once a year or so. Uh, but I do have a couple of the joints that need grease. Otherwise the oil runs out. Um, and I don't know what the oil and that, what the grease in that container was. So sorry. Uh, I, I don't get too picky about that. Uh, sorry, if I skip your question, go ahead and post it again. Um, I'm trying to read through them and find the questions. Regarding milk glue, um, casein glue like I just made, um, can you dehydrate the glue to powder and rehydrate it prior to use uh, for longer shelf life? Uh, similar for how you do for um, uh, kesmonite. Um, I do not know. I, I doubt it because one of the nice things about case and glue is that it is very water resistant. Um, it doesn't reabsorb water as easily once it dries out and cures. Um, so I don't think you can, but I've never tried it. Um, so I don't know for sure. It would be interesting to, to find out. It was from Alan Wolf. Good question. I might have to experiment with that. And then up here, 27... Uh, um, the, uh, this is from Travis Reese, the lateral adjustment lever from my number seven fell out from the frog. It is completely intact. What is the method you use to recommend, you recommend to seat it back into the plane? Uh, usually those are put on with a rivet. Um, and so it, it's a, you know, it looks like a nail that you pound through and you kind of mushroom over the head underneath or on top. I can't remember which, which side gets mushroomed over. I think it's underneath. Um, so a, a ball peen hammer and an anvil surface to peen it back into place. Um, if they get too loose, you can t actually tap down that pin a little bit harder and make the lateral adjuster more stiff. So it's not like rattling around in there. Uh, but if it fell out, that is my guess. Unless you're talking about a newer one, some of the newer ones actually are held in with a screw, um, but screws tend to back out. Um, so most of the, the older and better planes use a, a rivet instead of a, uh, a screw. Let's see, that was 28. Um, I've been thinking about making some wooden planes myself. Is there any benefit to stabilizing the wood in resin first? Uh, would it be less or more durable or does it make that much difference uh, yes if you stabilize the wood it would be more durable um, basically what you're doing if you're doing like a vacuum stabilization is you're sucking out all the air from the pores and replacing it with the epoxy or uh, stabilization that you have like like cactus juice or such um, and that does several things number one it makes the plane harder there's less compressiveness um, to it because there's less voids inside um, number two um, it makes it so the plane doesn't want to warp as much. It doesn't absorb as much um, moisture, so it's not going to have as much movement. That makes it far more stable. Um, so yes, if you have the uh, the capability to stabilize it, that would be an awesome idea. It is not uh, the traditional method because uh, people in the 1800s didn't have vacuum chambers that commonly. <laughs> but yes, um, vacuum stabilization would be an awesome idea for hand plane. And uh, actually, I might have to try that for one coming up. Most of the time, you just use a harder wood that's a little bit more stable and less prone to uh, stuff like that. Um, does paste wax work well for as an oil rust prevent prevention on your irons? Yes, um, that's what I use on all of my surfaces, all of my saws and plain irons, uh, plain bodies. Um, I use paste wax, just put it on with a rag and wipe it down in and uh, keeps the moisture away from the, uh, the, the steel.
works really well. Um, uh, up too far. Apparently the Plane Collector channel, another really good uh, channel, uh, he just did a, a video on reattaching the lateral adjuster to the frog. Um, so definitely check that out. I'll have to look at that one. I don't think I've seen that. It might be in my list still. So. Uh, what about using boiled linseed oil on Purple Heart? Um, yeah, works well, except for the Purple Heart still turns brown. <laughs> uh, boiled linseed oil is not a, uh, a surface protectant. Um, it brings out the color. Um, and most of the time, it'll actually make the Purple Heart a darker purple. Uh, which you may or may not like. Um, I don't know if it makes it any more richer or brighter purple, um, but uh, eventually it will still turn brown. Um, especially if it's in the sunlight, it'll turn brown overnight almost. <laughs> uh, uh, Nova Vapor, Vaporis, Vapors, Vapos, Vaporus. Sorry. <laughs> As, uh, hey, James, how is your daughter doing? How is. <laughs> How are you doing, brother? Um, I'm doing good. Thank you. Sorry, I had to say the name. Um, I like the name. So I love names, but I'm a butcher of them. So I'm sorry for that. Uh, I'd love to see your take on a shave pony, i.e. a shave horse uh, for a small studio. Yes, actually, I want to make one. Uh, Shan Rogers a while ago made a shave pony that mounts onto his bench. And that is on my list. Um, I keep talking with... Um, um, uh, Bearcat Woods, and we've been thinking about doing a uh, a collab soon where we each build a shave pony or a shave horse, and uh, that would be a lot of fun. It is on my list of things to do, but uh, that is a long list. Um, let me add this in 32. Um, question from Thomas Spillany. Spillany? Spillany? One of these days I'm going to get it right. You comment on everything, and I love that, but... Uh, <laughs> sorry man i'm putting a headboard together uh two bed post uh three board connected in between mortise and tenon joinery uh should i draw bore pins and tenons for extra strength or is it not going to help um in my opinion draw boring is always a fantastic thing um eventually every glue will eventually break down especially in a bed if there's any uh, lateral movement on the the headboard um, that being said, it's going to be a long time. And if you use a good glue, you're, you're yeah, it's not gonna be that much of an issue. I like the look of draw bores, And so that's why I use them. Um, but it's, you know, it's not gonna hurt anything. So if you like the look of a draw bore, go ahead and use it. It actually works well and does make the joint a bit stronger and uh, tighter to use. Um, Sorry, reading down, trying to find the questions. Um, Gene Chambers asks, um, how is the spring pole lathe working for? I think I just answered that one. I probably just uh, doubled over. But yeah, it's right over there. Working great. Um, it's a fun thing to use. A lot of people um, really don't like it when I use the spring pole lathe. I don't know why, but uh, it tends to frighten people off because it reverses half the time. I don't know why. Uh, but for an actual use standpoint, the spring pole lathe is a lot of fun. It's very challenging to learn. And uh, if, you, if you're not doing things right, it causes a lot of weird issues. And it's, it's just fun to learn. And I, I really enjoy doing that. Um, a lot of people ask me, you know, why don't you build a flywheel lathe? And eventually I will be able to build a flywheel lathe. Um, it's a flywheel lathe is just, it's faster, it's simpler. It's, it's, a, it's when you want to make something, that's the, the, the foot powered lathe to make something. Uh, but a spring pole lathe is when you want to make something and have fun doing it. Uh, that's that's why I like using it. Uh, uh, finding the next question. Ooh, I'm catching up here. Uh, so if you guys have any questions, go ahead and throw them down there. I, my, I actually might run out this time. Weird. Um... Uh, what do you think of spring pole lathe compared to a power lathe? What is the biggest challenges? 
Um, this is again from Dylan's woodwork. So apparently you guys like to hear about the, the spring pole lathe. Uh, the spring pole lathe is, um, it is not the tool you want to use when you want to create something. Um, most of the time when people go to a powered lathe, they have a project in mind that they want to complete. They want to make an item. And a spring pole lathe is not great for that until you've been using it for a long time because it requires a certain amount of skill. Um, because your, your foot is moving in time and your hand is moving in time and your whole body is switching and then you move off and you switch on your other foot. And so every step you do, it requires a whole choreography that you have to you have to learn. It's a skill that the only way you can learn it is to do it. Um, no matter how many videos you watch, it's just something that is, it's difficult. Um, and that's what makes it fun. And that's what I really enjoy. So a, a spring pole, you know, some people would, would make it because it's cheap and easy. It's quick uh, to make, but you know, for a few bucks more, you can actually go buy one from uh, go buy a powered lathe from Harbor Freight and make things much faster, much easier, much simpler. And any monkey can turn on a powered lathe. Um, it does all the work for you. You just got to learn it, especially with sandpaper. You, you can smooth anything out. Um, but that being said, spring pole lathe is just fun. I'm really enjoy it. Um, Darth Dweeb asks, uh, what's the next project after the glue test? I'm working on the dining room table, which actually I just, um, I just ordered up the epoxy for that. And I'm going to be using eco epoxy, uh, their, uh, liquid plastic, uh, filling it. I'm going to be doing, well, it total order is about four gallons of epoxy. Um, so it's, it's a lot of epoxy for this table. I'm going to be doing some inlaying of beach glass, um, a teal color into it. The, the, the table top is a red oak slabs. And these I, I purchased from, um, uh, Matt Cremona. And I'm really looking forward to doing this. I'm going to, I'm going to take my time and build a, a full series on it. So I'm going to have a video on pre-flattening the slabs. I'm going to have a video on joining the slabs. I'm going to have a video on, um, the glue filling cracks and voids. I'm going to have a, a video on filling large voids, the video on different types of epoxy, when to use them, when not to use them. I have a video on flattening the tabletop. I'm going to have a video on um, connecting a table without using glues, or hardware, or joints. Um, I'm going to do a video on uh, some of the half lap joints. I'm going to do a video on the trestle build. Um, and so this is going to be a whole lot of fun things. And it's actually going to be a a very beefy, large trestle um, with uh, three prong legs. Um, really kind of cool. Kind of a, uh, um, well, you'll just have to wait and see. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. The base will be out of elm. Uh, the top will be out of red oak. Um, and a lot of people hear red oak and they go, oh, red oak. But this is actually a really cool red oak, um, wild slab. Uh, the tabletop at its widest point will be uh, almost 50 inches wide. Um, at the narrow area, it'll be, uh, what, about 42 inches wide, uh, 11 foot long, total around 700 pounds. Um, it, yeah, it'll weigh more than my bench. <laughs> it's it's going to be a, a fun, fun build. Um, so if you can't tell, I'm a little excited about it, and I'm looking forward to uh, to doing this. So yeah, that's coming up. Um is it feasible to cut a dovetail with a crosscut saw? I tried doing it. I tried, but didn't go perfectly straight. Wonder if you need to practice or buy a dovetail saw. Sure, you can cut it with it with a crosscut saw. Uh, you're going to have to be a little more careful. If anytime you use a, a, cross, a saw with a lot of flame running with the grain, um, if you're not in control of the saw, the, the saw will wind around. Um, but anytime you are learning to cut a nice clean line, um, you're going to run into problems until you learn it. Uh, it's just part of the the the, the, the fun. <laughs> uh, the, part of the experience is just learning to to do that. Um, if you are, you know, you don't have a good dovetail saw and you want to get one, um, actually a hacksaw makes a really decent dovetail saw. Um, it's a, f a fine, thin cut. They tend to be a ripping blade. And uh, a hacksaw works relatively well. So give it a try and you might find you like it more. Uh, but most of the time, it's just uh, practice and uh, doing it more. You will uh, you'll learn to do it a little bit better. It's a lot of how you hold the saw, how you control the saw, um, how you let the saw do the work. 
Um, that being said, you know, if you're doing it with a really big tooth, cheap saw, it may be the saw's fault. <laughs> That's there are, there are many times when you can blame the saw for not having a nice clean cut. Um, any budget carving chisels uh, you'd recommend for a beginner? Budget carving chisels. Oh, there's a uh, there there's a topic. Um, there is no such thing as an actual budget carving chisel. Um, the, the the ones you get at Harbor Freight, you can get a set of those. Uh, those are trash. They're not carving tools. They uh, you're just going to rake your head over the coals. Uh, sorry for mixing my metaphors. They don't buy them. They're they're worthless. They're trash. They are not carving tools. Uh, they don't work. Um, for new carving tools, I haven't seen anything that I like that costs less than twenty dollars a tool. Um, if you go to my web my website uh, Wood by Write, um, I have a list of tools that I use on there, and uh, I have the the carving tools that I use. Um, names that I like, Peffle, um, they have a, a lifetime warranty on them. Uh, they're fairly good. Uh, the smaller ones are relatively cheap. They're like uh, 30 bucks a piece. Uh, Two Cherries, I really like theirs. Uh, they're nice, clean tool tools. They tend to be the cheapest ones that I would buy. Uh, they come sharp. They come ready to use, and uh, they're, they're good, long-lasting tools. I have a lot of Two Cherries that I use. Um, so new, there really isn't a budget carving tool. Um, you you got to pay for them. And if you're spending less than 20 bucks a piece, um, I, I haven't seen ones that I like. So definitely worth looking at though. How is the live oak mallet holding up? Any changes after time? I'm um, holding up great. Um, I, I turned a uh, live oak uh, mallet a while ago on the spring pole lathe. Um, I turned it wet. And so as it has dried, it has, it has turned more into like a slight oval than a circle. Um, but I love that thing. It's got so much, can, can, it, it feels good to swing. <laughs> um, yeah, if you want to see that, you can look up Wood by Wright uh, Carving Mallet, I think is what I called it. Um, Paul Texan asks, uh, what do you think about a $3 sharpening stone from Harbor Freight uh, to sharpen chisels and plane irons? If you're talking about that little pink one, uh, it's trash. No. Um, the, the diamond plates you can get at Harbor Freight work okay for a while until they get rusty and then they corrode on you. Um, yeah, uh, the cheapest stone I would go to is you can get like a two-sided stone. Um, you can order them on Amazon. They're about like 20 bucks a piece and you can get one with like a 400 grit and a 1000 grit. I used that for a long time. Those two and a strop and you're good to go. Um, I have a link to that as well on my, uh, on my website if you want to see the one I recommend. Um, I, I don't know of an actual stone cheaper than 20 bucks that I would buy. Um, they, they tend to either degrade too quickly or they're so coarse and people think that they're there for sharpening. Um, they're just not worth it. So my, my two cents on the, the matter. Uh, trying to find the next question. Um, yeah, those of you asking, I, I, I do want to, um, have other ways of doing this. Eventually my wife is going to be helping me out, helping me out with these. So she'll be the one, um, actually writing in all the questions. And that's when I can be over at the bench answering questions with a couple different cameras and I can actually show things while I'm working on them. That's what I want to do. Um, uh, but until I get that other person in here, um, adding those in, um, is a little more difficult. Okay. Uh, Um, another question from Michael. Um, I'm looking to buy a number four old, old, ugh, old revised. Um, can I square, can I square stock with that or just expect to smooth with it? Oh, uh, you're asking, you know, can you, you know, flatten a large board, uh, with a number four? Sure. You can do that. Um, the only benefit over to using a long plane over using a small number four is that the long plane will tell you when the surface is flat. 
uh, because if there is a dip in the middle, the plane will straddle that dip and the iron in the middle won't touch the wood underneath. So it will only hit the high points. That's what makes it really useful for flattening. Um, you can use a number four to do that, but you have to use something else to tell you where to take off material. So if you use a straight edge or winding sticks, you can mark out where the high spots are and then use the number four to just hit the high spots. Don't hit the low spots, just the high spots. And eventually you can get it down into that. Um, so you can flatten with a number four. You just need something else to tell you what is flat. Um, that's what makes a, using a number seven, number eight uh, easier. Uh, do -do -do -do, add that over here. 45. Um, ah, skipped ahead. I'm getting close to the end. So if any of you have any questions you really need answered, uh, go ahead and put them in there. I'll try and get to them, but uh, we'll see what we get here. Um, yeah, budget carving chisels. Uh, the, the cheapest way to get carving chisels is to go to a, an antique um, collector, an antique show, um, Midwest Tool Collectors, and buy the antique ones. You can usually buy them for like uh, 10 bucks a piece. Uh, they usually need to be sharpened and cleaned up, but they're most of the time good quality chisels that will last you a lifetime if you take care of them. Um, uh, finding the question. When you make your beeswax oil waxes, uh, do you have issues with film developing on the surface after time? I do, and I'm looking for suggestions. Use food grade beeswax and off the shelf oil. I don't know what you mean by having a film develop on the surface. Um, most of the time, it's like a block of wax, and I use that to rub on things, and it'll get junk and other things on it, but oh well. Um, unless you're talking about using, a, a, using it on a tabletop and eventually having a film develop on that. Um, no, I never have. Um, so I guess I don't know what you're, you're talking about with that. Um, but yeah, feel free to send me any pictures or an email and I might be able to answer your question a little bit better. Um, sorry. I don't know exactly what you're wanting for. Um, what is a good bench chisel set? <laughs> um, when choosing a chisel, choose it for the handle. How does it feel in your hand? Don't worry about the steel. Don't worry about the steel. Don't worry about the steel. I don't care if it's junky steel. Um, don't worry about the steel. Choose a chisel for its handle. Uh, and so that's why most of the time I hate plastic handles. They don't feel good in the hand. They just, they, they feel junky. They slip around. I don't like plastic handles. Um, the ones, my go-to chisel set are from Aldi, the grocery store. They were like seven bucks for a set and they work great. The steel is not the best in the world, but it works. Uh, it just means I have to sharpen it a little more often. Um, my second set is the, the cheap wooden handle from Harbor Freight. Again, the, the steel is not the best in the world. It just means I have to sharpen a little bit better. Um, sometimes they tend to be a little bit brittle right off the bat, but if you just sharpen back the material a little bit, you'll get to the, uh, the softer uh, steel a little bit farther back in the steel. Um, but yeah, uh, I, chisels, choose them for their handle, choose them for how they feel, choose them for the style you want. Um, and, and in particular, the, the ones from Aldi and the ones from Harbor Freight, I don't like the handle as much, uh, but they were cheap. And so that's why I bought them. Um, eventually I'm going to replace the handles and I'm hoping to do a video on that sometime um, and choosing a handle that I really like. Um, but yeah, that's my two cents. A lot of people really get bent out of shape about choosing a chisel for its high grade, high end steel. And you can if you want to, but that's not something that really comes into mind when I'm working with a chisel. And until you've been working with hand tools for a long time, uh, you're generally not going to be able to tell the difference between a high-grade steel and a cheap steel. Uh, are you doing a milk paint tutorial? Um, I would actually like to. It is on my list. Um, it's basically um, the case and glue that I just made in Monday's video, but then you add dye, and that's milk paint. Um, there are a bunch of things you can do to it to make it different, uh, but uh, that is... Basically what milk paint is, it's um, ice and glue and paint. And then it dries out, it gets a nice painted surface. <laughs> um, best bang for the buck on diamond stones. Um, over the lifetime of the use, the DMT stones, uh, the ones I have, um, I actually have them listed on my uh, on my website if you want to see the specific ones I have. I, I really like them. They 
I haven't run into any issue with them and they're, they're lasting me, uh, years. Um, I really like them. Uh, don't get the plastic ones that have the, you know, the, the, the plastic and diamond plate. And you see those little colored diamonds in there. Um, I've had a lot of problems with those and they tend to flex more. And I just, I don't like those. Um, my money is on the, the DMT stones. Yes, they cost more up front, but for how long they last you, um, it's, it's painful up front, but they're, they're worth it. So that's my, my list. Uh, there are other brands of diamond plates. I've tried a couple that I haven't been as happy with. They, um, but a lot of other people like them. So experiment if I, I guess if you want. Uh, Dylan Woodworks asks again, uh, how to, uh, how's the running going? <laughs> What's up for coming races? Yes, um, I'm actually doing a 50 mile race uh, here in two and a half weeks. Um, so that's my next big one. Uh, so yes, I'm running 50 miles in one day. My goal is to do it in 12 hours um, over the course of 8,000 feet of elevation, uh, up and down and up and down and up and down. Uh, so it should be a very fun race. Um, I'm looking forward to that. Um, but I've got uh, several other ultra marathons that I'll be doing this summer. Uh, I try and do one every couple months. So yeah, I love racing. Um, preferred furniture design, your original modified your original or modified uh, come up with your own or utilize another's. Uh, this is from Worth the Effort. And if any of you haven't seen Worth the Effort, you got to check out his channel. Um, one of his videos is the reason why I do hand tools today. Um, I still haven't found my style exactly. Um, I kind of like mission style. I like to, I like to kind of mix with it a bit. Uh, basically, you know, if, if mission style met shaker or if shaker got showy in their joinery um i kind of like that i like the, the simple square edges of mission um i like seeing the joinery that's why i like doing show tails where you can actually see the tails um i i i like that um but my style is always changing and so i'm always every time i build something new i, I pick something slightly different i don't like following others i like to see what other people do and jump off from there um, but, uh, I like to, to experiment. Um, what's a general purpose ratio of tenon to cheek? Um, one third tenon, two thirds cheek. Um, uh, that's most of the time. So if you're using a, you know, a three quarter inch wide board, um, having a quarter inch tenon running down the middle, that's about average. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I guess that's the, the best rule of thumb, but usually I choose my tenon thickness um, dependent on the thickness of my chisel that I'm going to use to cut the mortise. Um, and that tells me how wide. And so I pick up my chisels and I hold them up against the board and its width and I say, mm, yeah, this one looks about right. And that's how I pick it. Um, Uh, uh, keep chisels. Are, are you on Instagram? Yes. This is from tall Texan, uh, wood by right on Instagram. I don't post a whole lot on there, but usually once a day, once every other day, I'll put something up there. Um, I, I usually just forget about putting something up there and that's why I've, I've got to get them in there. Uh, have you tried the Harbor Freight diamond plates uh, for really coarse, coarse sharpening? Yes. Um, those are the plastic ones that have the you know, the diamond fill in them. I hate them. <laughs> I had one right off the bat and they don't last that long. Um, they flex too much. I, I just, I've not had a good experience with them. Um, I don't like those. So my personal preference. Um Uh, do wood woodworkers mentor? If so, what is the best way to find a mentor? Local guilds? Yeah, local guilds are fantastic. Um, where'd that go? Uh, this is from Doug Stevens. Um, if you can find you know a local group, a local guild to uh, to, to hang out with and meet people, uh, especially for you know learning new tools. Um, you know how sharp is sharp? Is that actually 
sharp or is it not? And until you've actually felt it, you don't know what it is. And so that's where it's great to come alongside someone who is, who's felt it before and set up the hand plan and say, here, this is what sharp feels like. Um, and so finding local guilds like that is, is great. Um, groups on Facebook, a lot of times you can, you can find someone who's local and say, Hey, I'm in this area. Anyone around there? I would love to hear that. Um, but if you're anywhere near Rockford, um, feel free to send me a message and maybe we can get together sometime and show you a few things. Um, yeah, um, 50 miles. Yes, I am running 50 miles. Uh, it's my goal. My my long-term goal race is actually 200 miles out in Oregon. Um, and over the course of the race, it's as if you are running from sea level to the top of Everest twice over the course of 200 miles. Um, so it's uh, I'm looking forward to that one. Um, boxes without dovetails are well boxes. <laughs> Sorry, don't know what the question is there. Um, when does all these sell their chisels? They used to sell them around Father's Day, uh, but this last year they came out sometime in like August. Um, so you just have to go there once a week and find them. And uh, where I'm at, usually the chisels will sell out within a week or so. Um, they're, they're the kind of the chisels that everyone's like, <gasps> I've got to get those. Um, every now and then you'll find them on eBay afterwards where someone then buys them at Aldi's for $7 and then sells them on eBay for like $17. Um, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, about it. Unless anyone has any last minute questions, um, I've been having a lot of fun here. Uh, if any of you want to join the uh, Wood by Right uh uh, what am I calling it now? The, the Wood by Right Hive Mind. Uh, if you go to uh, Facebook and type in Wood by Right Hive Mind, uh, you can see that group. And I'll be asking quite a few questions coming up. I'll probably be posting a question here about thumbnails. Uh, just like hearing what your ideas are and bouncing some ideas off of you and seeing what uh, what comes up. I think that will help the channel out a good bit. So um, if I didn't get to any of your questions, uh, feel free to send me an email. I'd love to answer them there. Um, I do have a contact form on my website. You can use that or uh, you can see it in the about tab on uh, the wood, on the, uh, the YouTube channel. So uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, hope you had fun. I did too. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Now, where's that stop button?